All right, Matthew 13, verse 24, the Bible says, And another power put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sow good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Let me read that one more time. Make sure everybody was reading with me. By while men slept, the enemy came, sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares. Uh, verse 27 says, So the servant of the household uh, came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence cometh the tares? 28 says, And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Look at somebody say, An enemy did this. Amen. The servant said unto him, Will thou then, uh, will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up the wheat with them. And he says in verse 30, watch what he says. He says, let them both grow together until the time of harvest. Yeah. Until the time of harvest. Y'all see that in verse 30. He said, let them both do what? Grow together until the time of harvest. Amen. The Lord has a word for you in this building on tonight. And I want you to repeat it to somebody. Uh, repeat our text and our subject tonight. And tell them this. Say, don't miss your harvest. All right. Hallelujah. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Don't miss your harvest. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. You be glorified. You be exalted in this place. Have your way. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. All of God's people say, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give me a few moments on tonight uh, to give us what the Lord uh, says, would say to us tonight concerning this text in Matthew chapter 13. You understand Matthew chapter 13 is a parable. And Jesus would talk in parables or use parables to help his people understand the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. And so many times he would use an earthly example to help them understand a spiritual concept. And so here he's giving a parable and it's known as the parable of the wheat and the tear. And when you look at this, look at verse 24. He says, he says the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good field, good seed in his field. Now understand the field is, is in this text, in this particular text, known as the world. The field is the world. The seed that this man is sowing, if we were to take it into spiritual content, it would be Jesus would be the sower and he would be sowing seed, which would be you and I into the world. All right. Now watch what he says about you and I. He says, and Jesus is giving of this parable. He says, he says unto a man which sowed good seed. And so watch as Jesus wants you to understand that we the seed, you the seed, that when I planted you, I planted good seed. What is a good seed? A good seed. Why should this takes on the characteristic or the DNA of whatever it is? And in this text is wheat. So watch this. Because the DNA of that seed is wheat, it's going to grow up to be wheat. When it comes into maturity, no matter what happens, it's going to turn out to be wheat because that is the seed. The seed cannot be nothing else than what the seed is. So when it comes to fruition, when it comes into totality, when it comes to harvest, because the seed is wheat, Wheat, it's going to look like wheat at the time of harvest. Y'all in here tonight. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So it's good seed. It's good seed. I, watch this. I like the labeling of good seed because whenever God does something, he does a good thing. Good. And watch this. Whenever he does something in your life, it's good. Watch this. All you have to do is be what he planted you to be. Yeah. Oh, my God. Watch this. Be you in this season. Whatever that is that God has called you, whatever God has planted you to be, because what he's planted you to be is good. Look at somebody and say, be nothing less than what God planted you to be. Oh my God, this is not, watch it, watch it, this is not the season to go back and forth, but this is the time to stand strong in what God has planted you to be. Oh my God, watch it, he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. And when you're planted, you bring forth fruit in your season. Watch this. You can miss your season when you don't stay planted. Oh my God. Which, which that suggests to me, watch this, in this season of our lives, this is the season to stand like you ain't never stood before. I'm talking about stand on whatever God 
told you. I'm talking about stand on whatever God said to you. Y'all quiet in here. I'm talking about stand on whatever God promised you. I'm talking about stand on whatever God called you to be. This is the season to be planted because the only way that you're going to see fruit is only if you stay planted. If you uproot yourself. You'll miss it. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't move. Stay planted. And he says, watch this. The sower planted good seed. The man planted good seed in his field. But look at verse 25. While men slept, look what happens here. An enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, you got to understand the enemy's purpose of sowing wheat. And I'm going to break it down. If you'll allow me a few minutes to teach it before I preach it, uh, you got to understand understand the enemy's intent for sowing tares. It's not just so weeds would be there to make it hard for watch this harvesting. No, 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 no. But when you understand that the enemy would sow tares, it was to sabotage the business of that particular farmer or the one who planted. Thank you. I appreciate it. Somebody's listening in here. Uh, uh, it was to sabotage it. It was to ruin the crop. So ultimately, it would be fruitless. So ultimately, it would devalue it. Oh, my God. Watch this. Even if you know anything about tares, when tares are planted, it can, in essence, zap some of the nutrients out of the soil, causing, watch this, the wheat not to be. When, uh, uh, if it were to be 100, it would not be 100. It might be 90. It would still be wheat, but it might not be at its fullest potential because the tear would try to uh, 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 get some of, zap some of the soil or the nutrients out of the soil, making it hard for the wheat to come into its fullest potential. Now pay attention here. The enemy does this. The enemy's reason is to sabotage or to ruin the good seed. Oh my God. It, it's to devalue it, watch this, or make it look less worth than what it really is. Let me put it to you like this. What the enemy is trying to do in your life, he can't mess up the seed. Y'all ain't in here tonight. Let me say it one more time. What the enemy is trying to do because he can't mess up the seed, he's trying to do things, watch this, that was zap out some of the nutrients, watch this, causing you to devalue yourself, making, your, making you think you're less than a child of God. Oh my God. What does value have anything to do with? It has everything to do with your identity. So if you don't know who you really are, you won't act as you're supposed to act because I'm acting according to what I think I'm worth. Oh my God. How long has it been? How long has the enemy been going around and allowing situations to, and hitting us with stuff? Watch this. To make us think that we're less than who we are. And so then we come in church and lose our praise because what the enemy did, what he tried to do to sabotage our seed. Oh my God. But there is revelation in the text because of the character of the one who sowed the seed. It's good seed and the enemy can't do nothing to the seed but what he will try to do. Oh my God. He will try to make it look like it's worthless. So then when you come and look at it you begin to see the wheat but you also see the other stuff around the wheat. Y'all ain't in here tonight. All right. All right. Look at the text. He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sold the tent. And, and then he just went on his way. That's how the enemy works. The enemy works. He comes into your life. And he simply just plants something there. And when he plants something there, whatever he planted, it grows up as you're growing. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And he goes on his mighty way. And he plants something where else? Uh, because you got to understand the enemy is not like God. He's not omnipresent. Uh, so he got to hit you where he can hit you and then he got to move on to other territory. Uh, and so he went on his way but he left a seed there. Now watch this. Depending on which seed you entertain uh, will be the essence of the characteristic that you take on. Uh, oh my God. Uh, because a seed 
seed is generally the origin or it's the start of whatever the harvest is supposed to come into. So if you focus on the wrong seed, y'all ain't in here tonight. If you focus on the wrong seed, you will initially forget about the good seed that you already are because your focus is in the wrong place. Look at somebody that's quiet on your own and I see what Minister Allen was already talking about but I'm used to it because I'm the pastor. But look at somebody on your own and tell them tonight, let's have a good time in Christ tonight. Say keep your eye on the right seed. Keep your eye on the anointing. Keep your eye on the oil. Keep your eye on strength. Keep your eye on your assignment. Keep your eye on everything that God said you already are. Isn't it amazing that God will hit you in your body? He'll allow things to happen around you. And it can be so devastating uh, that you start not reacting to God's goodness, but you start reacting to what he tried to sabotage your life with. I'm talking to maybe five people in there that understand the goodness of God, that the seed of God is so strong in you that what the enemy tried to sabotage your life, your anointing, your assignment with, that it didn't work. And one of the reasons why it didn't work is because you didn't keep your eyes on the sabotaging situation. Oh my God. Because if you keep your eyes on that, it will look depressing. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, tell the truth, tell the truth. Your situation, some of that stuff the enemy hits you with, it will depress you if you let it. It will disappoint you if you let it. It will discourage you if you let it. But what we have to do as the people of God, as the one that carries the seeds of Christ, we have to understand the enemy's devices and his tricks. And what he will do is, he will plant crazy stuff in your life to see if you'll take hold of the seed. Oh my God. But do I have anybody in here tonight um, that said, I understand who I am and that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Oh, there might be many tears around me. There might be many weapons around me, but it won't take over because the seed is the seed. Don't get mad at me. Watch this. If I'm going through and I ain't crying like you because I realize the seed is the seed. Oh my God. Watch this. Because the seed is the seed. I understand joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's joy that's accessible even when I'm in a dark time. It's joy that I can obtain even when things turn all against me. It's joy that's accessible even when nobody else believes around me. My situation is going to be better. Look at somebody real good and tell them tonight there's a seat on the inside and it won't let me stay down. It's a seed on the outside, on the inside, and it won't let me fall down. It's a seed on the inside, and I won't uproot myself and move somewhere else. But it's causing me to be planted, and I still got my worship. I wish I had about five worshipers that said I still got my worship, because there's a seed on the inside. I still got my y'all don't got. Wait a minute, hold up. I had a few days to get away. And me and Jesus had a good talk this weekend. And he said, the reason why people don't carry the right seed and they start to look like the tail, it's because they don't have the DNA of the Holy Ghost. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost... I started because I had a talk with him about my church. I can't, I can't talk about nobody's church. And God, I thank you for the members that I do have at the Power Church. And most of them are really good members. And, but some of them are struggling. And Lord, I said, why is the struggle of the way it is? And why does it seem like it's up one Sunday and it's down another Sunday? He said, the DNA of the seed of the Holy Ghost has not been planted in them. Because watch this, watch this. At conversion, you got the reception of the Holy Ghost. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute, hear me, hear me. But watch this, there's another experience that's supposed to take place and most of us in here has stopped that conversion. The Bible in the books of Acts, Mr. Sopran, 
and maybe Minister Allen will go with me too, talks about another experience that's known as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say baptism. That word in the Greek is the word baptismo. It means, watch this, to submerge. All right, watch this. There is a difference, Sister Jet, in me, watch this, getting a bottle of water. Open this water for me real fast. Open it real Be fast, be fast about it. All right, there is a difference. Thank you, sir. There is a difference. Hear me, I'm a little thirsty, so I'm going to take a sip while I'm using this illustration. Amen. All right, there's a difference in me taking a sip. Yes, yes. Ingesting water, all right? I got the water in me. But there is a difference in me going down to a pool jumping in the pool and being submerged underwater. Oh my God, am I talking to a dead church tonight? Watch this. Most of us have taken a sip of the water and we got it on the inside. Why do I know we got it on this side? Because Paul said, watch this, you have been sealed. You have been sealed with the Spirit, with the Holy Ghost until the day of, until the day of redemption. That's the reception. That's the conversion. At an initial stage of salvation, the Holy Ghost seals you. So you have the Holy Spirit, but the problem is you got some of it, but the problem is you ain't jumped in yet. And so the Holy Ghost don't have all of your life. He only got a piece of it because you ain't allowed him to watch this to totally be watching. You ain't allowed yourself to be totally submerged in him. Oh my God. Would you look at, I won't go to another church, but look at somebody and tell them tonight, I need you to jump in the water in this season. I, I I need you to just take it in. I just don't need you to give him a part of your life. I need you to give him everything because he will not take control of what you won't release to him. Oh my God. And watch this. So many of us keep having struggles in the same areas of our life. I'm, I'm just talking about my experience this weekend with Jesus Christ. He, with Mo, he said most of us struggle in the same area over and over again because that area we have not released it to the submersion of the Spirit. Oh, I thought people got happy when you're talking to the Holy Ghost. That's how I know it's a different day now. It's a different generation. But this is a day now where you got to jump in the water and let the Holy Ghost submerge you. Oh my God, would you shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, get in. Get all the way in. Let him cover every area. Let every area of your life be submerged in the Holy Spirit. Yet be baptized in the Holy Ghost. There is a difference in a person. Oh my God, there's a difference a person that's been totally submerged in the Holy Ghost. Watch this. It's amazing. It's amazing. In the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, our sister Jasmine, it talks about be not drunken with wine where is access, but it says be filled with the Spirit. Look at the word access. In other words, wine can bring you to a point of access. Access. Somebody say access. In other words, not, what does access mean? Access means a lot. Oh my God. Watch this. So when you consume alcohol, it produces an excess of wicked behavior. Why is it that if I drink Patron, why is it that if I have a shot of Hennessy, well, a couple shots of Hennessy, why is it that when I drink, come on, name your drink, come on, come on, oh my God, Jack Daniels, Jim B, come on, mojitos, whatever your drink is, my margarita. Come on. Why is it when I drink an excess of drinks my behavior immediately changes? But we talk about we got the Holy Ghost which is supposed to be the greatest intoxication and influence but alcohol got a greater influence over it. Watch this. It's trying to teach us that when you really got the Holy Ghost there should be immediate changes. And, hold on. And so the Lord told me he said stop philosophy. Why get sanctification is a progress. Until the day you die, you're going to be working on some stuff. But when you really have gotten the Holy Ghost, oh my, I, it ain't just about speaking in tongues, but there should be immediate changes in your life. Oh my God. I ain't never seen a person have five shots. And watch this, even if you have five, I've been there and done it myself. If you have about five or six shots, my God, you can try to offset whatever's intoxicating you. You can try to fight up against it and you having a hard 
my time. Father, against what has already taken over your body. And God is saying it's supposed to be the same way with the Holy Ghost. Love is supposed to take over you. That even when y'all listen to me in here, that even when bitterness and hate try to rise up, you're going to have a hard time fighting up against it. Because you're supposed to be so intoxicated and so influenced by the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It should be hard to fornicate. When you got the baptism. So now we want to be nice because we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But the fact of the matter is the people don't know the truth anymore. And it's not about here wandering in the floor. It's not about all the speak that you know. Because you, know, you can spit all you want. You can waddle all you want. You can speak in all the unknown tongues you want. But if you don't got it for real, your life will never change. And there's some things that are only going to change in your life. Watch this when you are totally submerged in the Holy Ghost. Watch this. You can talk to as many people as you want to. You can go to whoever you want to. Watch this. You can try this and you can, you can try to stop yourself as much as you want to. But there are some things that watch this. The only help the Holy Ghost can help you with. Look at somebody and say get the DNA of the Holy Ghost. Get the seed of the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Don't just ingest a little water. But look at somebody say jump in that thing. Oh, I need some people to jump on their feet even if you ain't gonna jump in. Just make me think you're gonna jump in and say I'm jumping in the Holy Ghost. I'm gonna let him take over my life. I'm gonna let him change something that I've been having a hard time for years. Changing myself. Shake somebody's hand and say neighbor it's your season. It's your year for change. When you get the Holy Ghost like the Bible says, you'll love better. I ask the Lord, why do they act like they don't want to serve no more? But when you get the DNA of the Holy Ghost, they want to do things for me. Because the only thing that starts to matter is whatever pleases the Lord. And is there anybody here that say, Pastor, I need to jump in. You barely jumped in when you got baptized. But I need you to jump in the spirit. He's the only one that can change your life. Look at somebody and say, when you got the DNA of the Holy Ghost, you'll praise when you don't feel like it. When you got the DNA of the Holy Ghost, you'll give God glory, even when it's hard. I talk about all the time that when my mama was going down with, the, with fighting cancer till the day she passed and transitioned to glory, she went out lifting her hands. She went out giving God glory. She went out telling the Lord I love you. And there's some people here tonight that got the seed on the inside. That no matter what tears around your seat, it don't affect you. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I need you to get full of it. I need you to get consumed with it. But I know I need some power with God Because whatever God purposed me to do in life It's going to take the Holy Ghost to do it Shake somebody's hand and say Neighbor, you're pregnant with power And you don't even know it Because you ain't relinquished control of your life You ain't relinquished every aspect of your life But tell somebody tonight Say neighbor, you're pregnant with power Trying to devalue me a long time and make me think I got low self-esteem. But you 
ought to tell yourself, self, you're beautiful. Because you got the seed of the most high God. You ought to have a sexy moment when you look at the mirror. Because I am a child. Y'all don't feel what I say. Because I am a child of the living God. You ought to tell yourself, if no man don't want me, y'all don't like what I say. As long as I love my God. Because I got some seed on the inside. if you focus on the situation. Let me say it one more time. For, for some praises that say in this season of my life whatever I'm going through is not going to cause me to miss my season, my harvest. Watch this. The, the Bible says the Bible says in our text tonight that when the, the, uh, the, the planter, uh, the one who planted the seed, begins to get questioned. And they begin to get questioned. And the question comes to him, didn't you plant good seed? Because sometimes your situation can mess you up so bad that it don't look like there's nothing good kind of out there. And watch what the planter says. The planner says, watch this, watch this, because in the in the suggestion that they, watch this, they suggest that they should pull up the tears. But you got to understand they didn't have weed killers there. They, they didn't have all this stuff we had there. So if they were to pull up the tears, the bad stuff, they would pull up the good stuff. So he says, he says, leave it alone. Watch this, until the harvest. But you also got to work around harvest time. Because we got this idea at harvest time, it's my season, it's my harvest. Oh, everything is going to be given to me. No, baby, watch this. Your harvest can be camouflaged. I'm going to keep this revelation to myself. I, I, watch this. And it can be camouflaged so you think you're not in your harvest and you'll miss it. Yeah. 
me, I'm just gonna mess it up. So when you come back, I'm gonna make your life even the more miserable. But God is talking to some people tonight and saying that, watch this, he's saying what the enemy is trying to do, watch this, it won't work. Stand to your feet tonight, I'm done tonight. This church, hey, see, see, Miss Allen, I can't look at the tear. Because I already see a church that's bubbling over with the Holy Ghost. I'm seeing a church that's responsive to my preaching. Knowing I'm preaching to them and they won't say nothing. Knowing I'm here, I'm coming all down your lane. They just be looking at me like, that don't relate to me, I don't have nothing to do with me. That's how they do, that's how they do. See, I'm not looking at the tail. There's good seed in here. And see, even some of the people that don't say nothing, I know there's good seed in them. That's why I don't get mad at them. I see the good seed. Somebody look at somebody on your own and say, there's good seed in you. There's good seed in you. There's good seed in you. That's why you got to keep coming to church. There's good seed in you. That's why you got to keep coming to Bible study. Because there's good seed. That's why you got to keep coming and giving God your best praise. Because there's good seed in you. The enemy trying to come and sabotage you to mess up the business. You know, if you know anything about a farmer that plant, he makes his money through what he harvests. So the enemy, what they would do is come at nighttime when they were sleeping. Come and start playing other stuff that didn't belong there. I wake up, y'all, because the enemy, when you're not looking, when you ain't paying attention, when you're not praying, let's come on in. Start planning this stuff, and all of a sudden you reacting and stuff, and then, and then you're like, where did this come from? I can tell you where it came from. It came from the enemy. It came from the devil. But God says to us tonight. That your harvest, the harvest is not affected by what the enemy tries to plant. Why do we continuously give so much credence oh my God. to what the enemy is trying to do in our life? We should give more credence to what the Lord is doing and how he's sustaining us to the time of harvest. I declare tonight there is a harvest time for you. Just talk to yourself and encourage yourself and nobody else don't want to be encouraged. Encourage yourself and say it is harvest time for me. It is harvest time. It is harvest time. I speak over your life tonight. It is harvest time. Lift your hands all over the building tonight. Somebody begin to worship the Lord tonight. Begin to honor the Lord tonight. And begin to thank you tonight that when the enemy tried to ruin it, he couldn't even ruin it. That God knew the end from the beginning. And I declare tonight that you're about to come into everything that God declared about your life. Calls you wheat, and you're gonna turn up and harvest wheat in this season. I wish somebody would begin to worship right where you are tonight. Worship right where you are tonight, and begin to thank the Lord in advance. Your life is gonna turn around. Things are changing right now. 